welcome to God's Gun Story OT Mini, friends. Uh, sponsored by Walk Through the Bible at World Teach in the Philippines. We are participating to that. And I would like to present to you the 40 steps OT Mini uh, this morning. And uh, I'm glad you are here. And uh, I believe that our hearts are full of expectation this morning before we go through uh, these uh, 40 steps of the Old Testament. Well, the Bible says uh, that God created something great and beautiful and started with the word creation. When you say the word creation, the scholars label the creative act of God as an ex nihilo. Ex nihilo means uh, God created something out of nothing. He just spoke the word and it was so, and it was good. And the first step that we're going to act is creation, okay? Put your hands in front of you and form a big, big circle and say, creation. One, two, ready, go. Creation. Well, that's a very uh, vivid illustration of God's power to all of us. We are not here if not for that first section, that uh, first storyline that we had, creation. He created everything, the things that we see and even the things that we don't see. And you know, friends, the, the, the world that God created is so colorful. It's not, it's not black and white. It's so exciting world. It's an exciting world full of colors because that time, this beautiful world that God originally created and designed is a holy world. It's being set apart. But one day, God created our first parents, Adam and Eve, and placed them in the middle of the garden. And there was a close intimacy between them and God. And God had a mandate to them, and that is not to eat the fruit of knowing good and evil. That was the prohibition. There is only one prohibition in the garden, and that is not to eat that fruit, the fruit of knowing good and evil. But in spite of that prohibition and warning, they disobeyed God. And so, sin invaded not only in their hearts, but in the entire universe. It was affected. It was, it was a, a, a drastic. Uh, they, they experienced the, the consequence, the dark consequence of their disobedience. We call this event in the scripture fall. Can we say fall? fall. Okay, creation, start with creation. Say creation. creation. Say fall. 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 But of course, the Creation Commission continues on. The Creation Commission, be fruitful and multiply, was not abrogated. It continued on, and they produced offspring. Oh, by the way, by the way, the reason why people got married is to produce not only offspring, but godly offspring. Do you believe that? Yes. Godly offspring. Of course, that mandate was followed, continued on, until one righteous family came into the picture, came into the scene, and that's the family of Noah, one of the descendants of our first parents. By the way, Noah was the first person mentioned as a righteous man. There are other righteous people in the scripture. Okay, we can read about the life of Simeon in the New Testament. He was also a righteous and devout person. But they grew in number, and uh, Noah believed God, had a deep faith in God. But during his time, in the context by which he lived, people become callous and hardened in their hearts. And so Noah came into the picture to preach about repentance, but his preaching fell on deaf ears. And God devastated the whole, the whole land, okay? the whole universe. With the flood, that's a judgment, a terrible judgment, okay? And we call that flood, okay? Flood. Can we say flood? Flood, flood. okay? Then just wiggle your hands down and then up slowly like this, okay? Okay, flood, one, two, ready, go. Flood. Creation? Creation. Flood. 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 Now, now, of course, we see in the story between Noah and God that God made a covenant. Okay. With Noah, we call this the Noahic Covenant. But because of God's faithfulness, he will still preserve people. 
He loves them well so that one of his manifestation of him protecting this family before the flood came is to build the ark, right? And then after that, for 40 days and 40 nights, we know the story. And I counted the number of days from that judgment day came, day one, until the water subsided. It's a total of 151 days. And then God made a covenant to Noah, I will never destroy this earth again with flood. And a rainbow appears, and it appears LGBT. <laughs> no, 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 no. Erase, erase that. <laughs> oh, LGBT, no. It is a sign of God's faithfulness to Noah that this world will never be destroyed by flood. But we read in the book of Peter that this world is reserved with fire. Apoy. Uh -huh. So we say creation, one, two, ready, go. Okay. Yes, of course. Okay. People multiplied in the face of the earth. And one day they gathered as a one big community. And they have an ambition to build a tower. Now, in the scripture it says they wanted to build a tower that will reach the heavens. It does not mention God. But we know that the heavens is a place where we say God is there. And so because of that presumptuous heart and spirit, God saw and God was displeased of their act. There's nothing wrong of building a structure that way. But the wrong thing that God saw in their heart is their motive. How about you today? What is your motive for being part of the kingdom of God? What is your motive as a believer now as you sit here? Is this, um, is this motive pleasing to God? I don't know of you being part of Walk to the Bible and World Teach. There's only one passion, and God knows my heart, is to teach the Word of God. Because I believe, every one of us, I believe, and you will agree with me, that when you teach the Word of God, the end result of our teaching is life change transformation. Do you believe that? And so when they had built, slowly uh, started to build that, 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 that structure, that tower, we call it the Tower of Babel, God came down and confounded or confused their language. So they separated ways. We call this incident scripture the division or the spreading of nations. So we say nations. One, two, ready, go. Nations. Okay, let's all stand and repeat those four big events. And those four big events, we can read that in Genesis 1 to 11. So you have now read the scripture, no? Genesis 1 to 11. Okay, creation, one, two, ready, begin. Creation, all, God. Nations, good, remain standing. Now, God had promised, made a covenant with a man. In Genesis 12, Abraham. Now, God said to Abraham, Abraham, move out from your land. This is a pagan Ur, and God is telling to Abraham to move to a place in which that place was unknown to Abraham. Di pa niya alam yun. Di pala niya alam na ito ay promised land. Okay? So, ang, uh, ang sabi ng Panginoon, I will make you a great nation. You will become a father of many nations and your descendants. Look at the stars in the heavens. Look at the sands and the seashore. There, countless of your, of your offspring will come about. Now, this is what we call a testimony or a covenant of Abraham in which God is building and preparing the land of Israel as a chosen nation. So, because of that, we say Abraham. Okay, Abraham on tayo. Abraham. When you are saying Abraham, the, you, can, you can just know, uh, make a flashes of the stars. Okay, Abraham. Abraham. Wow, galing. Sige, damihan nyo. Kumukuti-kuti itap yan. Ano? Abraham. Alright. Okay, creation. One, two, ready, go. Creation. Oh. Abraham. Okay. Abraham had how many sons? One, two, 
ha? Oh. Oh. On the onset muna, ha? To Ishmael and Isaac. Now, Isaac, okay? Um, Isaac is a, you know, um, out of the two boys, okay? Uh, first, by the way, there are a lot of siblings of Abraham unnamed. Um, Isaac came into the picture. Isaac. And, uh, you know, Isaac is a, you know, happy, jolly person. And when say Isaac, you show your laughing, you know, uh, emotions. Isaac. Okay, good. Okay, one to ready go. Isaac. Ha, 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 ha. Again, again, again. Isaac. Ha, 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 ha. Just like what you are doing now. You are happy people of God. Ha, ha, ha. All right. Okay, creation. One, two, ready, go. Creation. Good, very good. <laughs> now, Isaac, how many children he got? Huh? Isaac, two. Jacob, yeah. When you observe these two little boys, by the way, one, two, eh? uh, twins, okay? They are twins. By the way, uh, Esau had a hairy, you know, um, all over his body, okay? But we will not... Uh, do that, okay? <laughs> Esau, uh, Isaac, uh, no, no. Jacob was a smooth, has a smooth skin, like a baby skin. So, so we say, uh, Jacob, okay, Jacob. Jacob. All right, think no more. Jacob, okay, okay. Uh, Abraham, want to ready go? Abraham. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jacob, Jacob, Jacob. How many, how many children did he got? Twelve. And the youngest, second to the youngest, Simeon. Joseph. Joseph was sold by his brothers twenty pieces of silver to these uh, Midianite uh, merchants going down to Egypt from Gilead. Okay, we know the story, and we say, and and his father Jacob gifted him. A multicolored coat. And so we say, Joseph. Joseph. And say, Joseph. 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 Those eight steps uh, compose the first frame of the 40. Because we're going down through the f uh, five columns of eight steps each. So that's the first eight. Okay? We'll review together. Okay, one, two, ready, go. Very good. Can you review? Huh? We know from the narrative, the Old Testament, according to, I've heard this from Phil Tattel from his crucible, the tour. I think there are 70 plus descendants or, I mean, offspring relatives of uh, Jacob who went down to, to Egypt through the invitation of Joseph with the permission of Pharaoh. So they were there. But after many years, uh, 400 years, they were there in bondage. A new king or a new Pharaoh emerged, and uh, of course Joseph died, and the connection of relationships was a little bit messed up already. And so Pharaoh then, the new Pharaoh, became insecure. And now he threatened them and give them, you know, heavy burdens of task and load. What, 400 years? But Moses came into the picture. We say, Moses. Moses. Say, we say, Moses. Moses. Put a second voice. Uh, uh, Moses. Moses. Yeah, very good, okay? Came into the picture as a deliverer. You know, Moses lived 120 years, okay? Moses lived 120 years. He lived during the first 40 years of his life. He spent most time in the, those years in Pharaoh's court. In fact, there is a reference in Acts chapter 7 
when it says that Moses was educated in the best university in Egypt. And I suspect that's Alexandria. Even today, Alexandria is the center of education in Egypt today. I don't know because the Bible doesn't state where that university was. And so, here comes the picture. 40 years, old, 40 years, first 40 years, he became one of the best engineers, architects of Egypt then. But in that part of his life, he became a rebel. Because you know the story, he defended a brother for being persecuted. And then he fled to Midian. That's the second part of Moses' life, 40 to 80. He spent most of his time in the desert of Midian where he encountered God in that wilderness. You see, in the book of Exodus, the first one, two, three chapters, we can see the story of a lonely Moses. Perhaps his theme song is Mr. Lonely. <laughs> Mr. Lonely, parang kanta, no? Anyway, he was asked, or he was um, um, confronted by God to, to do a task that he cannot reject. He cannot abandon because he will become his people's deliverance. I mean, the Israel, chosen people of God. Say, sabi natin, Moses. One, two, ready, go. Moses. Moses. Now, uh, because God sent him to to, to Egypt, and he became God's deliverer to deliver his people out from bondage, 400 years of bondage. Moses came into the picture with all those, you know, with all those renewed focus on God, with that full obedience of heart, he faced now Pharaoh, and he said, let my people go, and the heart of Pharaoh continues to harden, that even God gave how many plagues? Ten plagues. And the last plague, what is the, the death of the firstborn? But because they listened to God's instruction about the Passover, they obeyed that in order for them to be protected, that their, first, first, that their uh, firstborn son will not die. And so we say plagues and Passover, okay? And say plagues, want to ready, go. And then Passover, okay? Again, plagues and Passover. Connecting those 10, 8 plus 2 now, okay? Everyone witnessed how the God of judgment, okay? Yahweh, the covenant name of God to Israel. And he said, these people, because their leader, Pharaoh, hardened his heart. And so, the terrible punishment came upon them. And after that, we read on the story that early dawn, all the people, the Egyptians, were so terribly afraid that they were the ones who even pushed them now to go back to their own host country, Israel. And uh, they, they went to a place, okay, and they crossed a deep sea. We call that the Red Sea, okay? Can you say Red Sea? Again, let me hear your second voice, voice here. Okay, Red Sea, one, two, ready, go. Red Sea. And from at the bottom, you, you clap your hands like this, okay? And, and uh, make a curve, a nice curve. Okay, Red Sea, one, two, ready, go. Red Sea. Now, they approach a mountain. They call this the mountain of God. The name of the mountain of God, Mount Horeb. That's the name of that big high mountain, the mountain of God. And in that mountain, God gave them the law and say, law, law. law. Of course, the other thing that he, he gave them is the uh, tabernacle. It's a blueprint while they are on their wanderings and all wilderness wanderings, they are now returning back to their host country. They can make some stopovers in the desert and, and just, uh, you know, build the tabernacle, and there are Levites and priests doing their, their task as part of the kingdom agenda. For the late Levites, they don't have, we, don't, we know it, they don't have any part in the land except to do the administration and everything like that, leading the people to God, teaching the people in their worship, etc. 
And these people, Levites and, 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 and priests, they are the ones who are rendering these things, offerings. You say offerings, offerings. and feasts. Say offerings, offerings. and feasts. Again, offerings, offerings. and feasts. Moses. Moses. Then, plagues and Passover. We, we do a higher, okay? Done. Okay. okay. Moses, want to ready go. Moses, plagues, pass over. And then, Red Sea, okay? And then, law. And then, offerings and peace. In the book of Numbers, well, they are in the middle of the desert. They continue to travel back to their own homeland. They did two censuses. Say counting. counting. Okay. One, two, ready, go. Counting. Okay. And say this. Counting. counting. They counted uh, the, the men. We call them the fighting men. I do believe that there are people or men in their ranks that they are not fighting men. No, 600,000 fighting men were numbered. And then they also counted 21 years old pababa. Tama? Who among you here are 21 years old above? If you are traveling with these people, you die. You will not reach the promised land. Oh, you will be buried in the sand. <laughs> and so, as I'm counting... And then say spying because this is now they are now close to the promised land and this is a strategic place. Okay. Close to the border south, I mean, of Israel in your geographic uh, Im imagination. They are there and they're ready to send spies. So we say counting spying. Okay. One, two, ready, go. Counting, counting. and then spying. Spy. Okay, ang galing ano? Counting. Ah, ganun naman ang counting natin. Ha, hindi yung ganun lang. Panduduro na yan eh. No? Counting, yan. Again, counting, one, two, ready, go. Counting. And then, is five. Okay. Alright. Um, um, they sent off their, the spies. One representative per tribe, so 12 spies. In the book of Numbers 13, 14, you can read the background passage there. That, that is a, a strategic spot that they can send off the 12 spies. And then they come back after many days of spying the land, and they make a two reports. The 10 representatives representing the 10, 10 tribes made the report. Exactly the same with these two spies. Minority report, they call but one thing is this, my take is this, the 10 tribes, okay, what they saw is the power of their enemies. The two spies, what they saw, they saw the power of their God. So what about you? In our Christian journey, you must be very careful to determine that. I'm being gripped by fear in my life. And because even though I have faith in God, sometimes my view with God gets blurred. When was the last time that in your private moments with God, you reflected on this? Do I have a big, powerful God that can carry me through? Or what I'm seeing right now is my circumstances that totally paralyzes me with great fear. And because they believe the ten, they were punished by God. And they wander and they and they wander in the desert for forty years. I can say wandering, okay, one to ready, go. Wandering. Just like wandering. Uh, encircling your, your, your hand wandering. like this. Okay? Wandering. wandering and say dying. Okay, wandering. Wandering. Dying. And then they approach the final frontier, still with Moses alive in that high mountain, Mount Nebo, where God talked to Moses. And he said, Moses, you yourself is disqualified to enter the promised land. If you go back to the story of Moses, he was disqualified. Why? Because he himself disobeyed God. We know the story of talking to the rock. 
Instead of talking to the rock, he hit the rock twice. What a terrible, terrible sin of unbelief. And many of us, you know, there's nothing, there's no problem of God's instruction to us. The hardest thing for us in many times of our lives is to obey God. Simple things. No, I can just dramatize. God said to Moses, just talk to the stone. Without any script given, pwede mo sabihin, bato, bakit ang tigas mo? Di ba? Bakit ang gaspang mo? Di ba? May problema ba doon? Wala. Pero sa init ng ulo ni Moses, binakbakan niya to. No? Pinalo niya. Now, would you imagine, if you are in Moses' shoes, Moses' shoes, what do you feel? Hearing from God. Sabi niya sa, disqualified ka. Not that, that we lose our salvation. Perhaps as Christians, we lose our rewards here on earth. And that's a terrible... And sometimes, I just suggest in my mind, what kind of encounter that was in that high mountain where God clearly spoke to Moses, you cannot enter the promised land. Tell this to your seatmate. Be a strong finisher. You know, <laughs> so wandering, sabi natin, wandering, wandering dying. dying. And then, before the people of God, this uh, new set of generation finally entered the promised land, Moses talked to them. And this is now, he is now repeating what was said. He is not giving a new set of law, but he is just rehearsing and repeating. By the way, the book of Deuteronomy consists of three long sermons of Moses, and after that, he died. So, so we say, second, okay, second law. Okay, second, second law. Eight, another eight. So eight tayo kanina, eight tayo ngayon, 16 na, malapit na. But before we move to the third column of eight, review muna tayo. Okay, creation hanggang sa second law. Okay, okay in your group. Okay, review. <laughs>